Hey, what's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here for Adorama TV. And in my hand, I have the new Sigma 14 millimeter F1.4 DGDN. So it's a full frame lens for a Sony E mount or for L mount, which I have right here mounted to this Lumix S5 Mark II. And I got to take this thing around for the weekend and I had some fun with it. So what do we got going on here? Well, I can tell you right now, it's a really well-built lens. It feels great. And you know that it's gonna be well-built when you see that art series stamped on the lens by Sigma. On top of that, you know it's gonna be super sharp, which I did find very, very sharp. However, this is a 14 millimeter lens. It is very wide angle. So you are gonna get that distortion factor towards the edges. But it, other than that, I found it to be very, very sharp and focus very, very quickly. But I think the real star here is the 1.4, right? What, what are you even gonna do with the 1.4 of the 14 millimeter? Well, low light pretty much, and also depth of field. With wide angle lenses, you don't usually get that separation factor going on because of the nature of a wide angle lens. But with the 1.4, I was able to get that nice pop of the bokeh or whatever you wanna call it, which was really nice to have in a wide angle format, which again, you don't see too often. But the low light is kind of interesting here, way more applicable, I think, because let's say you're doing something like low light architecture shots or something like astrophotography where you wanna kind of cut down that long exposure time, which is always a problem. I mean, the longer that shutter's open, you can run things like camera shake, things happening, and other things like the camera building up in heat, which can actually cause more noise in your image. And this will help you take that down, especially for Astro, I find. Uh, 1.4 is a very nice wide open aperture. It's super fast when you need it. So when you're in low light situations, you need that separation, you're gonna be happy that you got that 1.4. On this lens, you've got some things like, I don't know, an autofocus and manual focus switch. You have an autofocus lock button, which is nice to have. You also have the manual focus lock, which means you can get that critical focus, then lock it so you don't have to worry about it, it which is another thing that's nice. If you put it on a tripod, it's stable, you get that critical focus, lock that manual focus in, and you know it's rock solid. And underneath that, you also have a D-click uh, slider, which is nice. So if you're doing this for video, you can get rid of that click that you get from the aperture ring, and you just move the iris around wherever you want in between apertures, not have that click, click, click kind of feel, but more of a smooth transition between apertures, which is really nice, like I said, for video. Or maybe if you're a photographer that likes to have that, you have that option right on the fly with a nice click. You also can just lock it into the aperture. So you just slide over to the A and then you're just working the aperture from inside the camera rather than the aperture ring itself. But again, it's really nice to have an actual tangible aperture ring when you want it. So like I said, this thing's built really well. It does have that little bit of weight too. You are gonna feel like you were carrying this lens around, but it does come with a tripod foot, which is nice. So that if you are worried about mounting it and you don't wanna have it hanging from the camera, you have it right there mounted right in between on a balance point, which is really cool. So when I walked around the city, it was very overcast. I mean, I don't know what's going on here in New York, but we got like no dynamic sunlight going on. So I wasn't chasing the sunlight here, but I was using the wide angle as much as I could around the financial district, shot some stuff inside the Oculus train station. And even the fearless girl statue is really nice to shoot with showing the New York stock exchange and kind of using the characteristic of that wide angle lens to kind of like really put some flavor to that statue. Also went over to the 9-11 Memorial and got the entire Memorial in one frame with this nice wide angle. And it didn't feel, too wide, like it didn't feel like it was like fish eyeing out or anything like that. And you can see in the shots what I'm talking about here, you get the sense of the scope of the size of one of those pools that happens over at the 9-11 Memorial. So as a proud New Yorker, it was really nice to walk around with this lens in that area and just get some shots. Also, I had to stop by the Wall Street Bull. I think that was kind of fun, but instead of taking the shot that everyone takes, I got the whole scene, you know? I got the line of people that are waiting for that bull and the people that are posing with it. So, you know, I got that nice wide angle characteristic working for me in that aspect as well. Got some nice backlit roses for the memorial so that I could see what's going on here with the close focus, which I was actually impressed with. It's under a foot. It's almost like a few inches of minimum focusing distance. It's really nice. You get pushed in really close to your subject. And again, with that 1.4, you're able to separate them from that background, letting that go out of focus just that much more dramatic. But what's really cool here is if you close down a little bit, you get 11 blade aperture, which keeps that aperture more round or rounded rather. And it changes the look of that bouquet to be more smooth. And I guess I hate saying this word, but like creamy looking, but it, it really is an aspect. Cause a lot of times you'll find aperture blades as like nine or seven and having the 11 blades really does make a difference in the shape and the look of the texture of that out of focus area. 
Being that this is pretty ideal for astrophotography, Sigma seems to be really leaning on the fact that it takes down a lot of flaring and ghosting, which I did try out as much as I could in an overcast day, trying to point it somewhere directly at the sun. Uh, so I didn't find any ghosting or flaring happening, which is really nice, especially on a wide angle lens where that is prone to happening, especially at wide open apertures. So it's nice they took that into account, especially if you're looking for things like landscape and other things where there's direct light blazing into that front element. One of the last things I'm gonna let you guys know about this is that it is a rear filter mount. So if you are looking for filters on, it's not gonna go in the front. You are gonna cut your filters for the back, which is all right. And it's expected with something that's got this type of front element on it. Of course, it's built well. It's, it, it's got that nice ceiling to it, but it's also just built to be a pro lens. So if you have any questions for me about my experience using the 14 millimeter F1.4 DGD and from Sigma Art Series, Comment down below, I'll do my best to answer it. Don't forget to like, share this video around, hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. We put up more videos like this and I'll see you next time, later.